Hey, what's happening folks? I'm over here at the office hanging out. It's pretty late Sunday night, so I figured I'd show you guys what sold this weekend and get this stuff packed up. One less thing to have to do tomorrow. I've got that big box right over there. And that's a bunch of parts for an Oster Regency Kitchen Center. I picked this up a while back and I had it listed for $25. I just wasn't able to get any hits on it. So I went ahead Saturday and lowered the price to $15 and somebody bought it right up. I got that at the more than a thrift store for $10. It came with several sets of beaters. I can't remember how much I sold the beaters for, but I believe they paid for the $10 bag. So the $15 should be pure profit. I think there's some other pieces left. As tempting as it may be, I probably won't buy those again. I sold this board game. It's called Tripoli. I think I got this at the local dump a month or two ago. I recently lowered the price to $13 and a buyer bought it almost immediately. I sold these two baby Einstein DVDs. I got these last weekend when I was at the dump with Tom. So they didn't cost me any money at all. One's a baby Bach and one is a Beethoven. They'll sold for $14.95 with free shipping. I sold this blender jar collar. It goes to a KitchenAid blender and it sold for $9.99 free shipping. This is a Food Saver by Tilia Jar Saver. I think it was about a month or two ago when I was at the dump with Tom. I saw that there was this and several other little pieces like this in a box. So I went ahead and grabbed it and this is the first item that sold out of the box. And that item sold for $15 with free shipping. This is the Armory Identification Code Board. It came from that Hero Quest game that I've been parting out. What I'll probably do is sandwich this in between two pieces of cardboard and I'll write please cut carefully on the box so they don't cut right through it. I recently lowered the price on this and it sold for $17.50 with free shipping. I sold this copy of Dragon Warrior for the NES. It comes with manual. This sold for $11.95 with free shipping. So the sales have been pretty poor lately. I haven't even hit $100 in about five days. Over the last five days, I think I might have had like a $70 day, but it mainly it's been like 40, 60, 30. So you might be wondering, well, what are you doing to combat the slow sales? Well, over the last few days, I've been going through all 650-ish listings. What I've been doing is three things. I've been removing the item completely, so I'm either gonna donate it or throw it away. I've been lowering the price or I've been adding best offer. In some cases I'm lowering the price and adding best offer. I actually just finished doing this which is why I didn't do any listing at all today. I really only do this a few times a year. Essentially the reason that I do this is because I'm trying to make sure that the price that I originally put it at is still relevant in the market. And in a lot of cases they weren't. One example was that sleep tracker that I sold the other day. I had it marked at $59.99 because at the time there were some selling at that, but I ended up selling it immediately for $42.95. So you got to check your prices. You got to make sure you're not overpriced. Even if you're overpriced by a dollar or two, that can literally stop you from getting sales for months, I mean even years. I mean you wouldn't think that a buck or two would stop somebody from buying your item think again so a few times a year I like to go through my inventory you know and I'll just kinda of check things out and I'll just try to figure out why isn't this selling sometimes I notice the prices are just too high and other times I just cannot figure out why stuff isn't selling and sometimes items just don't have a very good sell through rate that means there's 20 listed and only three sold in the last 90 days if that happens, you have to ask yourself if you want to continue carrying that product or not. And these days, for me, probably not. One thing I noticed when I was going through all of my inventory is a lot of these items are like super, super long tail. And some items, you're lucky if you'll even make five bucks on it. So I'm pretty much trying to keep away from that stuff. It's been tough times in the Nugget household, but I know a lot of people are going through a tough time, so all you can keep on doing is just keep on working. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go get this stuff packed up, and I'll talk to you guys later. Hey, what's happening, guys? I'm over here at the laptop. It's Monday morning. I already got most of the items packed up from last night, and I've already set them out for Richard. I just got another sale come in through eBay. And this thing is heavy. And it's this Lodge cornbread pan. This thing is heavy. 
how would you like to catch a beaten with one of these? It weighs almost five pounds, but I figure after packaging it's going to be like six pounds. I thought I was going to catch a little break in the price trying to send it just regular priority, but it's too heavy for that and it's going to have to go in a medium flat rate box. I probably paid in the area of five or six dollars for that and the buyer paid $24.95 plus $15.50 shipping. Hey, I'm getting ready to start doing a little bit of work. I've got these items over here that I'd love to get photographed today. Believe it or not, I actually straightened up this table over here. I had a bunch of crap on it, just a bunch of wires and stuff that didn't belong, trash. And I cleared up most of that, and now it's got inventory that needs to be photographed. I've also got this big tote full of shoes that I want to do something with as well. I doubt I'll get all of it photographed, but I think I can give it the old college try. Hey, I'm over here just taking a coffee break. Cheers to you. Mr. K took off, but I'm not sure where he went. I think he said he had to pick up some car parts. It's an absolutely beautiful day out here. It's 70 degrees, and it feels wonderful. Usually the cows are out, but they haven't been out lately, so I guess they got them in the barn. The mailman still hasn't come yet, but that's actually a good thing because I sold two more items over the last half an hour. I sold this vintage Crystal Quest water filter. I think it might have been a couple of months ago I picked this up at that auction tag sale. I think I got this and a hair straightener and it was five bucks. I had it listed for 35 but I took a best offer of 30 and I'm going to go ahead and put this in a flat rate envelope. So far, the best sale of the day is this HP toner cartridge. In one of my recent videos, I picked up six of these at the dump. Unfortunately, one of them was open, so it was no good. This one's a magenta, and I still have one more of these. And somebody bought it for $69.95, and they're paying $20.40 shipping. Those will definitely be good profit. I still have four more total, and I'm thinking after fees, I should make about $60, maybe a little more. I'm going to see if I can't get those packed up now. Because over here at the Retro Junkie eBay store, we take our customer's satisfaction to the next level. Alright, I got this big guy packed up. Profit on this, $66.63. This thing actually weighed out at 2 pounds and 4 ounces. If it would have been 2 pounds, it would have shipped at about $11.30. But since it went over to 3 pounds, it got bumped up to like $15.80 or $15.90. So there's like four or five extra dollars just for four ounces. I contemplated and just putting a piece of brown paper over the box and calling it a day. But you know what? I said I don't want to chance it. I'm just going to leave the bubble wrap and stuff on it. But it kills me that four or five bucks just for a few ounces like that. If it was my money, if I was doing like free shipping, I probably would have just done the brown paper. But I charged for three pounds. You definitely got to be careful when you're working with larger items. You can get burned pretty quickly. That's the reason you almost never see me send out big items with free shipping. Hey, what's happening? I'm over here at the light table. It's pretty late, but I want to get some items packed up because I think I'm going to go out thrifting tomorrow and probably hit the dump. I sold a couple of items tonight. Nothing spectacular. I sold a Nutribullet 900 series specifically NB-201. I had it up there for 30 bucks. The buyer sent me an offer of 18. I counted at 24 and they accepted. I think I picked that up in the Salvation Army. I probably paid between four and six dollars for it. So I probably won't make very much money but I should clear about 15. I also sold this log cabin jacket pattern. This right here is one of those examples of where just a dollar or two makes all the difference in the world. This thing has been listed since January with absolutely no interest. I think I had it up there for $17.99. I lowered the price to $14.99 and it sold the next day. That's what I keep on saying. Don't get caught slipping on those high prices. You guys probably don't remember any of this because I haven't sold any of these parts in a while. But I used to be a big seller of Ronco Rotisserie Showtime parts. I ended up showing my friend Jesse how to sell these parts, and he ended up making a lot of money. I think over the years, both of us have probably made hundreds and hundreds of dollars, if not a couple thousand. We used to pick them up all the time, and we just knew they were guaranteed money. Sadly, the market's just not like that anymore. We just can't sell that stuff the way we used to. I have some of those parts that have been listed for over a year. I've lowered the price, lowered the price, 
and they just don't sell anymore. So I generally don't mess with that stuff too much. I was actually at a yard sale this weekend and I saw somebody had one at their yard sale for 40 bucks and I took a photo of it and sent it to my buddy Jesse. It's kind of like making fun of the prices, like 40 bucks, come on, I'll give you like five, you know. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think it was Ron Papil. I would always just call it Ronco. And I think that's where his company came from. He was basically the king of sell-all back in the day. And the rotisserie that he sold is probably one of his most famous pieces. But the strangest thing happened tonight. His sister, Lisa, actually messaged me about another item I have. It's this Vegomatic. And she was curious to know if it was made by Ronco or not. And I guess since her brother died, she's trying to research the history of the Ronco products. So I sent her a message back and I said, first off, I just want to say sorry for your loss. And I mentioned that her brother has made really nice products over the years. And I told her that I've been selling the parts to keep those things going all over America for several years now. So I think later on I'm going to have to see if I can't find some kind of markings on that machine. But I'm not sure if it's a Ronco or not. We'll just have to see. I ended up taking photos of all of this stuff over here today. I actually listed that DeWalt case about half an hour ago for 20 plus shipping. And what I'll probably do is just start on this stuff tomorrow and get as far as I can get. I've still got a bunch of stuff over here. And once all this runs out, there'll be even more. But anyway, guys, I appreciate you watching. I think I'm going to get out of here and get some sleep. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Have a great night. The following is a paid program brought to you by Ronco. This Showtime Rotisserie and Barbecue is now priced under $100. That's right. It's now under $100. Set it and forget it. Set it and forget it. You just set it and forget it. You just set it and you forget about it. You just set it and then forget it. Set it and forget it. And of course, if it isn't the best product that you ever bought for your home or kitchen, I don't want you to keep the machine. Please return it to us and do get your money back.